President Wyatt, Dean Parkinson, faculty colleagues, members of the Coker College family and community, and Coker students. What a humbling privilege and great honor it is for me to stand before you tonight. Class of 2017, this is an exciting time in your life. But I want to get something straight with you right now. There's no way that I can compete with Nick from Georgia Tech. <laughs> so we'll go forward, and now your expectations will be just a little lower for this conversation speech. Um, this is an awesome time in your life, and I salute you. Tonight is about you, class of 2017. This is your time and your place. When you graduate from Coker, you will be in the elite 33% in America who have earned a bachelor's degree, which is no small feat. You have chosen Coker as your place, recognized in the Princeton Review as one of the best colleges in the Southeast home of the Cobras, whose baseball team racked up the 2013 NCAA Southeast Regional Championship, the 2013 Conference Carolinas Tournament Championship, and ranked number three team in the nation this past year. Yes. In high school, many of you have excelled in academics. You are truly scholars. And many of you have been athletic stars in high school in basketball, volleyball, track, softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, wrestling. Or you may have won awards in music, art, drama, or dance. Or you may just have been biding your time in high school to get away from home. And here you are at Coker. And you may be away from home for the very first time. This can be daunting and somewhat intimidating. While you're here, you may struggle with any number of things that were mentioned earlier. You may struggle with campus life. You may struggle with the regional culture. It might just be loneliness, being misunderstood, or just being plain homesick. There may be days when you feel like the figure depicted in Edvard Munch's small painting, The Scream, which depicts a genderless, distorted human figure standing on a bridge, holding its hairless head, hands flat against its sunken face with its eyes and its mouth wide open. with that silent scream trying to make its way to sound and to the world. Now I have to confess to you that when I looked at that small painting in the museum in Oslo, I was amazed at the value of that painting. But I do think that the artist captured a very real human emotion. The scene of each of us, you and me, when we feel helpless and out of control, just remember, you are not alone at Coker College. We are here for you. Isaac Newton, the great physicist and mathematician said, if I saw further, it was because I stood on the shoulders of giants. Now I'm sure that most of my colleagues who sit behind me would not think of themselves as giants, but I would like to suggest to you that indeed they are. While you are at Coker, you have the opportunity to experience the passion my colleagues have in their respective disciplines, whether it is in the arts, business, social work, music, history, the sciences, English, psychology, teacher education, and so on, or whether it is on the athletic field. We are here to share our connections and life experiences with you, a role we genuinely love. We identify with William Wordsworth who said, what we have loved, others will love, and we will teach them how. We want to teach you how to love what we love. The esteemed historian Walter Parker has said, without historical understanding, you can't be wise. 
Without geographical understanding, there can be no sane use of resources and therefore no future. And without civic understanding, there can be no democratic citizens and therefore no democracy. You are showing great wisdom by choosing Coker College, a liberal arts institution where you will have the opportunity to reflect deeply on your own historical understandings. Explore your geographical understandings in our study away and study abroad programs and practice the role of citizenship in our wonderful community of learners. Whatever the reason that you've chosen for Coker as your place, we're delighted that you are here. As I said earlier, this is your time and your place, class of 2017. Hallmarked by advertisers, life is a special occasion. And yes, life is a special occasion. We have talked about your chosen place, which is Coker. Let's talk about your time, your lifetime. Perhaps it's at the stage of my own life that I choose to look at it this way, but perhaps we should all think about our lives in quarters. You know, like the quarters of a football game. Think about this, the average American lifespan is 78. Let's add a couple of years for good living and good luck. Wow, do the math. You college students here, class of 2017, you are living in the end of the first quarter of the average American lifespan. And some of you have just entered your second quarter. This is sobering, isn't it? Let's take a look back over the 18 years that have brought you to now, your first quarter. Some significant events have taken place. Among them, but not necessarily in chronological order, are these. In your first quarter, the telecommunications world exploded. The Intel Pentium chip was released, World Wide Web went public, Yahoo, eBay, Google, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram were launched, and Snapchat was created. As you know, an application which can send photos, video, texts that are permanently erased after 10 seconds or less. But on the flip side, you now have a digital sing signature, one that cannot be deleted or erased. Imagine this also, amazing wireless chips and batteries can be sent around the world, come back to General Electric and give General Electric information about that battery's life in the heat of Bangladesh and the cold of Mongolia. And what about the amazing possibilities that you will have with 3D printing? All of this in your first quarter. I think one of the ones that's the most fascinating to me though is the electric clothes. Physicists at Wake Forest have developed a fabric that doubles as a spare electrical outlet. It converts subtle differences in temperature across the span of clothing from your cuff to your armpit. It converts it into electricity, enough electricity to power up your MP3 player while you're just sitting still. And for you workout enthusiasts, what about the analytical undies that send data to a computer to show just how hard you've worked your quadriceps, your hamstring, your gluteus muscles during the day? In your first quarter, the Channel Tunnel, the longest sub-oceanic tunnel in the entire world, linking England and France open. In the medical world, in your first quarter, we are approaching a point where technology can fully replace a functionality of the human body. Sight restoring eyes with a video camera converting visual patterns in the brain. A full service heart that pumps blood without a pacemaker. Gripping hands in which fingers move independently, helping amputees. And right now, there are exciting experimental studies being conducted on what medical researchers are calling the breath signature. You simply breathe into a device and the breath analysis will detect, sometimes within about 10 minutes with great accuracy, illnesses such as lung cancer, tuberculosis, asthma, 
and lactose intolerance. Recently, a peer of yours created, developed a web app that detects breast cancer. And in your first quarter, the first female Secretary of State of America, Madeleine Albright, was appointed. In your first quarter, we elected our first black president, President Barack Obama. And in your first quarter, America was attacked on its own soil by foreign powers, and more than 3,000 people lost their lives. Subsequently, our country and its allies have entered into two long wars, Iraq and Afghanistan, where great sacrifice has been made to ensure the freedoms and rights we enjoy so much in America. So in your first quarter, there have been those who have worked on your behalf, on my behalf, on our behalf, for the greater good of the world, in global communication, for our nation's safety and well-being, for gender equity, children's rights, minority issues, health issues, education issues, and the list goes on. Often these gains have been made at great personal sacrifice, but you need to know the quality of your lifeline now and in the future has been influenced significantly by your first quarter happenings. Now our dean, as you just discovered, Dr. Parkinson, loves to tell stories. Indeed, we all have life experiences which shape the person we are today and the persons we are becoming. In the early years of my teaching career, I met Thomas. Thomas was a first grader in my class. He was a handsome but sad, blue-eyed, blonde-haired, quiet little fella with gentle ways. From first sight, excuse me, I love this little guy. At the time, we had an epidemic of lice in our school, and as teachers, we were diligently trying to identify and help all students with this issue. I had been watching Thomas. He came to school dirty on most days. And on this particular morning, I saw Thomas continually scratch his head. I decided to take a look. As I parted his hair with a comb, I will never forget what I saw. There was movement all over this child's scalp. I saw more than lice. I saw critters of every type living on and crawling around his head. I was shocked. I had never seen anything like this. I thought I might pass out. It was an unforgettable emotional experience which has gone with me throughout my teaching career. I remember going with that school nurse to visit Thomas's home later in the day. His home was a shanty in a very poor neighborhood. We saw very little furniture and we learned that there was no running water and no food. Thomas was a true child of poverty whose family pulled up stakes and disappeared within 24 hours of our visit. I would never see Thomas again. Why do I tell you about Thomas? More than half of the people in the world go to bed hungry each night, although there is no shortage of food. Why is this? Many of the world's peoples die from preventable diseases. Why? Recently, I watched a 60 Minutes program that included a segment on Bill Gates, one of the wealthiest men in the world. There were some things that impressed me about him. He is still a student. Even in the beginning stage of the fourth quarter of the average lifespan of an American, and his present study focus is centered on eradicating the major diseases of the world. I was impressed with his detailed study of Leonardo and the possible application of that body of work today. I was fascinated with Gates's reading focus. He reads and studies subjects like water, fertilizer, and toilets. Toilets. The problem he and his foundation are working on right now is, can man create a toilet that needs no water or electricity? You know, in third world countries, water and electricity are scarce. Sanitation issues are major. 
So yes, class of 2017, there are many issues and concerns in education and health care, in business and society that need new ideas, need your innovative thinking, your creative thinking. Ted Williams, one of the greatest hitters in baseball history said, a man has to have goals for a day, for a lifetime. He went on to say that his was to have people say, there goes Ted Williams, the greatest hitter who ever lived. Do you have a goal for today and for your lifetime? I have learned along the way as I pass through the fourth quarter of the average American lifespan that life has many question marks. With wise counsel, make the best decision possible and move forward. Also, I want to remind you that details do matter. Pay attention to even the smallest detail of anything you do. Quality, doing it right the first time is worth a lot. Consider how many accidents have been prevented by the white line painted on the right shoulder of the road. We can thank someone you've probably never heard of, Dr. John Doerr, a metallurgical engineer for recognizing many years ago and spending a great deal of his personal time and money to get the transportation system and the government to see just how many lives that painted shoulder line would save. The next time that you're on a dark, long, rural road, no, lit, no lights, excuse me, think about that small dream that he had to make it happen. And Cobras, it was about this time in August, 50 years ago, that a young black man in the second quarter of his life stood on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. before 250,000, and he gave a speech that you have come to know as I have a dream. A dream Martin Luther King Jr. articulated so well that it resonated with the American people and subsequently led to events that would change the course of American history. Are you the person who has the ability, the stamina, the will to make a difference in the lives of others in the continuing quarters of your life? This is your time and your place and you are inventing your tomorrow today in this quarter of your life. My mother, who will be 95 on Armistice Day, is living in overtime. She would tell you, life is hard if you take it by the yard, but life's a cinch if you take it by the inch. As I come to the end of my talk, I would like to give you the challenge of John Wesley, a great theologian of the 18th century. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. This is your time, and we're so glad that you chose Coker College as your place Thank you for being a great audience and have a great school year.